and I'll point over at like the bubble headed ones with the light. Uh, that one uh, smells different when uh, it speaks. And then I'll point at the Avix. Smells uh, different when they speak. Uh, mercurial changing uh, uh, scent. Hiver sees it. Hiver understands what uh, is happening. Hiver just wants to know, is it on purpose? Oh, mm, no. <laughs> no. It just happens depending on what, how, how I feel. Mm. But it isn't. I mean, another Avix sees it. They don't smell it. Uh, Iver will like kind of like nudge up closer and kind of as an aside. Hiver says, um, that could be used against you. If Hiver can smell it, we are. then Hiver can smell it. Uh, 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 scent me fear. No, 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 no. Scent me, uh, anger or happiness. No, no, no. Yes. Emotions are the lowest form of uh, no, consciousness. No, <laughs> I'm going into a state where I'm consciously trying not to show emotions, and I may actually right. start I was, mm -hmm. looking around. Right. <laughs> whatever, whatever you're smelling now, Hiver, is probably irritation. So, <laughs> or at least discomfort, right? It's like, get your, get your proboscis, you know, away no. from my, my right. feathers. So Hiver, Hiver has been told to be friend. Therefore, Hiver is friend. All Hiver are friend. Hiver is friend. Hiver is friend. Drone Hiver is a friend. Hiver emissary is friend. Well, it seems like a pretty uh -oh. good start so far. Think of Hiver as part of uh, Hive for Avix and Mercap. We are Hiver now. Which will probably prompt me to shift my facial features to show I get you. Ah, interesting. Uh, I've hyper approved. So <laughs> now you have this bird like creature with a hyper face. Right, right. right. Excellent. Like friend. Well, hyper is hyper. You should meet Hive or Hiver. So what I would like to uh, to point out now um, is that um, right between the uh, Esau talking to the Avex emissary, um, there is a discharge of energy, um, very much like a... a um, a, a crackling sphere too bright to look at that only manifests for a second, but it sends black lightnings off in random directions from it. Um, and then basically, you know, detonates with a, a horrific bang. Oh, right. And so the, um, the, the, you guys are, are actually in the, the, you know, are actually in the, the, the range of this. So as the, the discharge begins, as the, 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 the glowy, you know, thingy, uh, begins, um, it's all a question of, um, what you would like to do. And, uh, basically I'll just continue to narrate until you all die, unless you tell me something <laughs> that you do that would make it not happen. So, so to get a better uh, understanding, he was talking to someone when this happened. The the emissary of the Avix. So not the Avix that you're talking to, but the emissary of the Avix, the the grand one, okay. um, and who is being monitored by their own security quite closely. Um, who doesn't seem to have you know seen this coming, um, and the uh, the the Esau, the kind of snaily guys. 
um, they are talking very earnestly. They've actually entered into a fairly intensive conversation. Um, and during that time uh, is when is, it's between them. They're, they're a little ways away. You guys had kind of wandered off a little bit on your own from that region, but mm -hmm. not very far. Um, and so most of the two of you had actually come up to Helma's character. So, you know, you had moved more than she had in my mind. And so, um, you're in a, in a, in a space. Remember, we have these bars for the Avix to sit on. Um, and then, uh, so that's, that's the primary furniture in this particular part of the, you know, of, of this hangar, which, I'm going to say is where you guys are located. If we look at that hangar bay, um, you are almost precisely at the south part of that circle. Um, so not there's some doors right there near the southernmost part. Um, and so you're to the left of those doors where the walls are real thick. There's some built up ancient equipment there that nobody's paying any attention to. Um, and so... Uh, so you're in that region. Uh, just so we know, uh, the region that um, has kind of been claimed by the Isoa and Wa faction um, is to the, the the extreme northwest of that that of that big circle. Um, the the Chatty Circle is at the extreme eastern point inside that circle you know the, the 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 thing you stand on when the time comes right um everything else has kind of this as i mentioned sort of a scattered and and semi-organized but not particularly regimented arrangement of different places to walk around in and talk and stuff like that there was some discussion of perhaps having uh food but that turned out to be a logistical nightmare. And so there's no food or drink here. You guys are all on your own for that stuff. Um, they they tried and it, it's just like, oh, God, this is not going to work. So that got canceled. Yep. So yes, I can only imagine. Yeah. So um, so anyway, though, that's the, the layout. And it, it and so therefore the you the the three of you have probably kind of wandered, I would say more toward the center, not very far though, just for purposes of getting just a little bit out, you know, just a little bit more chat and your conversation has become very interesting. All of you are like, you know, taking notes at this point, making friends, right? This, whatever a Hiver means by friend, considering what <laughs> that they're all named Hiver. I'm not sure what that means, but anyway, um, so the, the that is the deal talk to me shall you shall you uh succumb to the detonation or not Ew. um when uh yeah that blast now being like a a, a protective slash annihilator which is you know uh, have i seen something like this before this uh particular that's well hold on hold on right now there will be time for cogitation later Okay. Right. Oh, okay. Well, hybrid uh, goes to the air and lifts up its wings, uh, jettisoning all its like uh, drones. And the drones are basically attack defense drones. So they swarm around Hyver and um, he moves back toward his emissary um, to protect it. So you're going um, that away, away from the, yeah. the blast. Got it. How about yeah. the other two? Taking flight two? Mm -hmm. More yeah. or less. Staying local at the moment, trying to get sight on both or on the other Avix, trying to figure out what's going on there. Are you going to be protective toward the emissary or are not? Are you willing to? If I have the feeling it's necessary, I'll at least uh, fly over there. Okay. Or try to. Right. I mean, depending on the blast, I'm. Well, it's as I say, it's it's up gearing up. <laughs> right, it's gearing up to detonate right now. So, that's your. So. Mm -hmm. I will probably try to get there. Okay. And we'll see where I end up. Okay, Renee. How about uh, how about Duke? Duke. Yeah, Duke's like, uh, oh, Hyber must have smelled something really bad. So I'm following. 
<laughs> Excellent. Okay. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're basically getting out of range is the idea. Yes. Okay. Now let's uh, let's consider uh, how this works because we have all right. Um, we have first of all, um, I will tell you what the uh, gift dice situation is, which is one through three. Um, and the yes. more the better for you. Um, but I'm putting this one at two. It was very unexpected. But then again, everybody is a little bit on edge for like, when will the shooting start? So um, so as a matter of fact, considering the character concepts, it's, um, it's actually going to be three dice for Hover. The other two will get two dice. You're not really combatants um, in the same way. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's three for him for for hover two for the other two. Now you can look at your traits and pick one trait that you think you would be using in this circumstance, um, and interpret generously. These traits are all you know widely applicable. Gotcha. I have uh, one of my traits where I didn't put any bonuses on, but it's, you know, it's considered a trait. Uh, the one pi uh, one time protector and annihilator in the service of the Hiver matriarch. Right. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, I understand like with the traits, it's also, it, it you know, it's, it's color for your character and actually tells something about the character. Does it offer any mechanical benefit if it doesn't have any bonus dice attached to it? Uh, no, except for one thing. You can sacrifice two points from your pool right now to give it a plus one if you want to. Right. Okay. And and then basically my pool goes down. Right. Or it's permanently. Yeah. Okay. Um. You know what? I'm not going to because okay. I, uh, I'm, if if I'm able to uh, uh to narrate uh, uh later, mm -hmm. I, I I got something going on. Okay. I got Good something. Enough. Okay. So, so you're you're but you're using that particular trait. Got it. Yes. Okay. And so then, therefore, what about the others? Um, Helma, certainly flight is eligible if you want to. You don't have to activate the trait in order to fly. You can fly whenever you want, but it's just wherever, whatever you think would be useful here. I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to activate that trait. I'm going to activate uh, connecting information. Ah, putting two because and two together. Because I right. would, I, I would, Try to put things together, then try to go there and deliver the information to my security friend. Right. So it's basically you're preempting it, you know, look out sort of situation. Here. Yeah. Got it. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Renee. All right. So I had three traits that I assigned dice to, and then I had three left in my pool. Mm -hmm. If I have three traits that I don't think are really applicable, do I just use what's in my pool? Can I just drop on that? We're going to you're going to talk about pool dice in just a minute. Gotcha. Right. If you don't want um, to use a trait, then you don't have to. Gotcha. Okay. Then maybe, yeah, maybe I won't use a trait for this one. Okay. So, therefore, you're at two dice. Jerry is now at three dice because that one had no, uh, had no bonus. And then Helma is going to be at two plus, what is it, two or one? Ah, so four. Four dice at this Ooh. time. Okay. Now, Nice. You are also permitted to gamble dice from your pool. Just make sure we know which dice they are. Actually, it doesn't matter which dice they are. Frankly, it doesn't. Just know how many of the dice you're rolling are pool dice. They don't have to be different colors or anything. They don't act differently from the other dice in any way. So, um, and just remember that if you lose, you will lose them. And to yes. succeed, all you need is a one on any die. Gotcha. Um, so while you guys think about this, I'm going to put up another useful picture in our chat. Oh. So just letting you guys know a little bit about how this works. We are currently in uh, the 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 arrow, the gray arrowhead, right? And we're sort of getting ready for the roll. No, to sort of orient where everybody's doing. Now, I will say that most of the other people, um, the the we can follow up on this in a bit, but the AVIC security has not spotted this on their own, as I mentioned. So this has hmm. really taken that little group that's affecting it, that's most centrally affected by it, by surprise. 
what everyone else is doing around will follow up on that later. There's no way that your characters have much. You know, nobody said they were looking around to see what was up. So, um, okay. Have people decided on whether to spend, use some pool dice? Question, those pool dice. Yeah. They are gone for the rest of the game or no. for the rest what of the day? Happen? Okay, neither. Um, if you succeed, they come back to you. Okay. Your, and, oh, okay. and then, man, your pool may go up by one, in fact. Um, oh, okay. And if they you lose the roll, then they will be gone from your pool forever. Um, so, Ever. right. Now, the way remember, the way you get pool dice is you succeed and then decide to take a new die. Right? Yep. So you can build up from the bottom again. You just, the pool is, this game is all about failure. There's going to be a lot of yes. failed rolls, okay? Let's just buy that right now. This is not a this is not a succeed your way through play kind of kind of game. Disaster is expected. Um, right. This is not fatal situation for any of you. I would have told you before all this that this was deadly for you. Um, it may be for other characters, but it's not for any of the three of you. Um, and then finally, um, I won't get into it right now, but after the roll is made and we know who succeeded and who didn't, then there's a choice that each of you, that, that you have if you succeed. And it's not hard. Um, this is also, Jerry, this may be most important for you. Um, this is one of those games where you only know what all's going into it before the roll. And a okay. lot of what actually happened is established after the roll. Right. So you can right. say things like, OK, they fight for five minutes, you know, and he almost loses. And then you can there's plenty to talk about about how it got there. And that comes after the roll. Yep. So, yep, that's right. that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so there's uh, right. uh, so everybody, the if, if you've decided how many dice to, to gamble into this roll, if any, you go right ahead. OK, I'm going to add one making my pool a four okay. uh, dice mm -hmm. right now. So do I roll now or should Let's I Let's let everybody roll else? all at once because it's more fun that way. Mm. Yeah. At one, two, uh -huh. so that's five. Excellent. Yep, I'm going to add one as well. So okay. I'm rolling three. Everybody roll. All right. Oh, no ones. Oh, oh. okay. How one. about you? Okay, excellent. I, so I got one, one. No problem. And the other oh. cool thing, is that doesn't matter how many you get. Okay, good. It's that was going to be my question. Yeah, on off. Okay. No degrees of success or anything. You just... Cool. Now, excellent. Now, the way that we will be handling this is that if you fail, I tell you how it went down, right? If you succeed, you have a choice. You can either get one more die for your pool, and don't forget, you get back the one you used, um, and Renee is going to lose that die. Your pool just dropped by one. Um, but right, but the two of you can choose either to increase your pool by one, or you will tell us how it goes down. And you don't okay. have major backstory authority. You can't tell me who set it off, for example. Right. But you can tell a lot about how it went down and extend things a little bit to kind of, you know, go a little further along. Otherwise, if you choose to take the die instead, I'll do it, and I'll just tell you that I'll give like a milk toast narration. I'll just I'll close oh. out the conflict. You succeeded, fine, but it'll be, right. you know, you're you're getting something if you if you choose to do the monologue. You actually get to you know. Oh something. yeah, yeah. So Jerry, I know where you're going because it involves talking. Helma, how about you? It does. <laughs> Nah, I take the dice. Okay, excellent. I take the dice. Right. Don't forget, you can always form pool dice into trait bonuses, but that's a one-way trip. You can't go the other way. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, Renee, and then I'm I'm yes. gonna be I'm going to start with what happens specifically to your character. Um, what happens is that you're actually caught in the blast um, as you're trying to to you know fade back from it. Um, and the uh, 
Well, let's see. Actually, now that I think about it, no, I'm going to have the other two. I'm going to have the other two go first. Yes. Right before there. I, yeah, there's, they're going to add a lot of details that are going to help me. So right. go for it. Um, okay. Well, well Jerry, first, uh, rather. mine, because I'm not taking the die, because uh, I mm -hmm. want to get in there and drive a little bit. Um, basically, I'm floating back toward my emissary, who was really close to the, um, what is it, the Avix and was it the bow? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the drones come out as I'm trying to fly back. Um, I'm going to direct some of them because since, um, uh, what is it, uh, Hyber Mercap is the only, uh, you know, uh, Mercap or Hyber Mercap there, get some of the drones. Um, and, but by doing that, my emissary and the other protector annihilator. Uh, get caught in whatever that blast is. Um, so as I'm like falling back and sending out drones to like you know protect, Multiple, it's like right. you know I look over and it's like ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, but that's cool because that means okay, awesome. Now I get to talk for the other two, right? Because the the monologue was given over or the narration's given over to me. First things first, we have managed to, um, we have we have managed to see these drones, basically. I mean, the Merc, I mean, Duke and you're kind of like, here it comes, right? I'm about to get it. Couldn't get there. You're like, oh, I better follow. Oh, shit. Here, it, you know, I'm getting it. And these drones just descend upon you and absorb the blast and a bunch of them are shredded and you're just standing there now with like shredded hiver around you unharmed. So that's, that's one thing. Um, and then for... Um, for your character, Helma, uh, you succeeded. So that's awesome. You actually managed to warn the security officer in time who instantly flies like backwards and up, pulling the emissary with him, right? In a, in a loop, big, big backwards loop um, away and out of the range of the blast. So you flying over there and said, you know, look out. And then they do this, pull this big loop. You're prepared as well. So it's pretty clear you'd be going with them. Perhaps less, you know, they, they, they get all the flash this time. Um, and, um, and, but unfortunately, that means that the Esau emissary or the person who had come over to talk with the Avix emissary is just annihilated by the blast. Just Ooh. a few pieces left and that's it. 